Russia on Friday reported 10,598 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, pushing its nationwide tally to 262,843. Russia's COVID-19 task force said that 113 people had died over the last 24 hours, bringing the official death toll to 2,418. The 12th of May marked the end of the non-working period in Russia, which was introduced at the end of March in a bit to stop the spread of the deadly virus. And on Thursday, the streets of Moscow were visibly more bustling. A few days after President Putin announced the gradual easing of COVID-19-related lockdowns. Visuals on your screens show many people in Moscow, the capital, leaving their homes wearing masks and gloves under new rules as the city begins a gradual return to work. Clinics in Moscow, the epicenter of Russia's epidemic, have begun mass random testing of residents for coronavirus antibodies. To avoid an escalation in the number of infections, the city authorities have made it mandatory to wear gloves and a mask on public transport. Russia carried out a massive testing campaign with over 6 million people tested for COVID-19 this week. The Kremlin this week eased the national lockdown to slow the spread of the virus. Despite the steady rise in new cases, Russia's reported mortality rate is significantly lower compared to other European nations hit hard by the pandemic. And now we have Lucy Taylor joining us live from Moscow in Russia. Lucy, thank you so much for being this here on the broadcast to talk to us. Uh, the working period has officially begun in Russia, even as uh, capital Moscow, which is the epicenter, is undertaking mass random testing. Yes, Moscow's mayor has announced this new program, which begins today. It's testing for antibodies, IgG and IgM antibodies, which will show whether somebody has had the virus already or not. And it's a widespread mass random testing program. So the mayor says about 70,000 people every few days will be invited. They'll be chosen at random. They'll receive the invitation by email or by text message. And he urged Muscovites to go and have the test if they receive this invitation. He said it was their opportunity to contribute to victory over coronavirus. He says the authorities will then use this information to try to work out how and when Moscow can ease the lockdown. Because although, as you said, Russia nationally has ended its non-working period, President Vladimir Putin said that people could start to gradually return to work. He has given the different regions of the country autonomy over that decision. Um, so here in Moscow, the lockdown is due to continue until the end of May, despite that statement from Vladimir Putin. Um, so the mayor is trying to work out how many people have had the virus, whether people have any le level of immunity to the virus, and to use that to inform the decision about how people can go out and about in this city. So this random testing he hopes will give that information. Um, he's previously said that he thinks about three times more people have had the virus in Moscow than the official figures show. Right. Uh, two things about Russia is that it's again back to over 10,000 confirmed infections uh, f uh, on a daily basis uh, as of Friday. It had gone down below 10,000, giving some form of hope. Now it's back again over 10,000 uh, infections. But still somehow the mortality rate remains one of the lowest in the world. Yes, there's lots of reasons and speculation being given for that. This is now the second largest outbreak in the world in terms of the number of confirmed cases. They've passed quarter of a million this week. And as you say, it does seem that those cases are still surging. We've had 10,000 cases a day confirmed every day for almost two weeks, apart from yesterday when it was still almost 10,000, just below that number. So a very widespread outbreak. The Russian authorities say that that's partly because they're doing so much testing, six million tests um, since the start of the pandemic. Um, and they say they're catching cases that other countries wouldn't include in their totals. So um, it says many of the cases are as asymptomatic or they're at very early stages of the disease and therefore the outcomes look better because of the statistics working in that way. There's also um, uh, a difference in the way that Russia records deaths 
from coronavirus compared to other countries. So Russia has a much higher rate of autopsy. Anyone who dies of an infectious disease here has to go through a formal autopsy. Um, and so they're finding other causes of death. Anybody who's died from a different cause of death other than the severe pneumonia, which is known to be caused by coronavirus, many of those people are being listed as dying with coronavirus. They may have had the positive test, but not from coronavirus. And therefore, they're not added to the official death toll. So that could be one reason why the death toll here looks much lower than other countries. There is a figure that helps us, though, which is the excess mortality, the number of people overall who've died over the last month, over the last months, um, from, from all causes and how that compares to previous years. And even on that figure, it is much higher than normal, but it isn't as high as it is in other countries. So it, there may be some truth to the fact that Russia's outbreak has resulted in fewer deaths than other parts of the world, but people will still be very nervous because of the overall number of cases and because of the fact that those cases do appear to still be rising and not easing as they are in some of the countries. Lucy Taylor joining us with that latest live ground report from Russia, from Moscow. Thank you, Lucy, for being with us here on the broadcast.